Thanks for joining us, Lewis. You were a two-time yeah. Commonwealth um, Games athlete. Um, do you remember in 2014 when you were selected to go to your first Commonwealth Games? Yeah, I do actually. Um, it, we, you, we were basically waiting for an email. I think I was with uh, David Kettle at the time when we actually got emails. We were actually, I think we were doing, we just done a gym session or something. We were in the car. Um, or actually, maybe it was, at, uh, we, I think we might have been doing a pitch session um, in Cardiff. And we got the email and everyone checked the emails, obviously, and then obviously got the note. And uh, yeah, it was, I can't, I can't really describe the feeling you get when you're selected for an event like that. The Commonwealth Games was, it was just an incredible event, especially as it was my first one. And we just missed out on the one in India by 0.5 of a point as well, the um, four years before that. Um, so yeah, having missed out on that and then getting that confirmation, uh, yeah felt amazing yeah and having like missed out on the india one um did like sort of kill a few demons from four years previously for you yeah of course um we we knew we were getting better as a squad um and that improved with results that we had in the past and i think a lot of the guys were getting to the end of their um end of their careers but they were still putting uh a big shift in and we were getting better at performances we're getting better and better and better throughout the um throughout those four years so when it came to the chance of actually qualifying i think we put ourselves in a really good position to do that yeah nice and you make your debut commonwealth games debut against india that must have been a very proud moment despite the result yeah yeah it was it was it was funny because uh obviously we were like right it's in scotland uh they're going to hate the weather and all this stuff. <laughs> Turned out it was 34 degrees on the first game. <laughs> and we were struggling and they were absolutely loving life. So, um, yeah, it was a great experience at the first one. Um, and uh, we were trying, we had, we, I think we were playing the system just to, to try and, because we weren't as good as we are now um, in terms of uh, the team and how we've been playing and stuff like that. So we weren't able to compete with the, with those kind of teams then of where we are now. But um, so we played a different system, which allowed us to try and compete in that, in those um, scenarios. Fair. And how did you find like the whole experience, like the opening ceremony, staying in the athletes village in a sort of multi-sport event? I remember going to the, um, open the ceremony and couldn't get over the the crowds, the atmosphere and stuff like that. Um, my favorite. I'm a big foodie, so for the food hall to me was <laughs> the best thing in the world. Having having so many options, um, and it was like a big dining hall, and you got you got to see athletes that you you followed for about all of your life, really. And they were just getting on with their business, um, which is great. And they they most of them were really really like just really friendly and happy to have a conversation and stuff like that as well. Yeah, amazing. And um, as for the other games, it was quite a tough tournament for you guys, wasn't it? So, um, do, you, do you remember like sort of individual moments from those games at all? No. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, we weren't, we were nowhere near the stage where we are now, as we are now. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, a lot of those guys were coming to the end of their careers. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a tough tournament competing with that level. And we hadn't played at that level um, previously, whereas now we're playing at that level consistently, so we know what to expect. So when we go, when we're out to teams against Australia, I think they just come off the World Cup, and they're like, I think their worst score was like six nil, and that was in the final. They won like six nil. Wow! Um, and they were unbelievable, and it was a fantastic experience playing them. I remember the feeling um, going out to play them because they were they were the world's number one by a mile at that point. Um, and it was great to play and that is, have that experience. Obviously, the Scotland game was a bit of a kick in the teeth, being 3-1 up and, and uh, losing 4-3. But obviously, they got the crowd right behind them. We played really well in the first half and kind of let our standards slip in the second. Um, and then, uh, I think, what was the last game? I forgot the, oh, Trinidad and Tobago was the last game. Um, yeah, that was obviously a very good memory. I, had a, um, I scored a good goal in that game. So... A lot of people look back on that now and how I've developed as a player and be like, was that you? <laughs> um, just because I've, I've, I've changed my role a little bit. Um, but yeah, I had a, obviously I've got very good memories of that game.
Yeah, and that goal was fantastic. Like, when you got the ball, did you think, that's what I'm going to do? I'm going to skip past these three players and bang in the top corner? <laughs> no, 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 to be fair, I just, I, just, I won a free hit and I just took it as quickly as I could to try and get rid of one player. And then uh, I, I use a skill that a lot of people know me for, for my, for my V drag. It's, <laughs> everyone knows me for, the, for that. And then uh, I was about to shoot, and then one per, I, I think it was actually Quan. Um, Quan tried to tackle me, and I was about to shoot, and I just j just reacted and just chipped over his stick before shooting. Um, but yeah, it was a great feeling after that goal went in, with all the frustrations we had with the games beforehand, having performed quite well considering. Um, and then scoring that goal, and then Gaz got uh, our second, I think, literally five minutes later, not even that, I don't think. So we were in a really good position to go on yeah. and win that game. And was it good to like sort of end on a high? And then after the game, was it like, oh, I've got to wait another four years to another Commonwealth Games? What was the feeling yeah, after? Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, good to end on a high, and with, with a group of guys who were retiring as well. Um, it was great for them to end the way we did. And then obviously the closing ceremony and stuff like that. I don't think, I didn't really think about the four, like <clears throat> not being able to experience it in four years. I just was trying to take every moment as it came and the closing ceremony was, it was amazing. Good performances. Um, and it was just a good chance to um, basically celebrate with the guys. Yeah, amazing. And then um, the four years between them, did they go quite quick? Was uh, like, oh, I've got another Commonwealth Games has come about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, we had a big shift in team after that. So a lot of youngsters came in who were on the brinks beforehand. Um, and we played, we had been relegated the year before from the B division and the Europeans to the C division. So it was basically a completely fresh start. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny, cause, well, to be fair, in, in hockey in general, seasons and years go really quickly, mainly because <clears throat> you're looking forward to the next weekend. You're looking forward to the next game, and it's and it just and it just goes really like so fast. Um, and also as I'm, as you get older, funnily enough, time time goes pretty quick as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, we had a big shift in team that year. We played really well. Um, obviously, the standard wasn't as high because we were in the C division, but we did what we needed to do. Uh, international hockey is never easy, uh, no matter who you're playing against even if you come against some really weak teams. And we had that in the past with the team we had previously, where we played against a Sweden t Swedish team, which was very weak. And we, we should have beaten quite comfortably. And we only beat them 1-0. And that stopped us going into maybe an A division in, uh, previously. So um, we knew, what, well, <clears throat> because it was a, a younger team, I knew what, like, what we had to do. And you couldn't take anything for granted. Um, so we played in that C division this year. I actually got food poisoning in the C division. Well, that year, that uh, I don't have very good memories of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of that uh, tournament, I got a food poison. I think it was on the the day before we played our first game. Okay. So we had, I think we had four or five games in. I think it was a week, maybe, and I got food poisoning. And all I did was stay in bed, get up, play the game, go back to bed get up, play the game, <laughs> go back to bed <laughs> um, throughout the whole week. So I didn't really have very good memories of that, of, that, uh, of that tournament. But we did what we had to do. We got promoted to the B division that year. And then since then, we've just kept improving and kept... Um, and the big thing is keeping the squad together. We've had a group of guys now that have been together, I don't know, six, yes, maybe six years, five, six years now. Yeah. And I just think that shows in results. Um, and I'll say it time and time again, the Wales group at the moment is the closest group of players I've ever been involved in. And was it as proud a moment being selected and going to the um, Commonwealth Games as it was in 2014 for you? Oh yeah, 100%. Um, I, I never take anything for granted and I think the older you get, you kind of do that. Um, you kind of look at things as an experience, pretty much everything. Um, and I'm always a guy who's willing to learn off every situation. So. Um, when I did get that confirmation that I was going, uh, I, and obviously, <clears throat> no matter what you say, it being in the Gold Coast is huge. Um, going into the other side of the world, that that climate, I've never been. I've, I've been to Australia, I went to Sydney with the Youth Olympics in 2009, but I hadn't been back since. Um, and the fact that it was in the Gold Coast was just a, a just a complete different experience that like, everyone was really looking forward to. Yeah, and um, the opening ceremony, what was that like at um, 2018? I've seen the pictures of you all in your 
your shirts like that must have been amazing it was a great experience again as i said it's the closest group of guys i've ever been involved with so it was uh fantastic to experience that with them um experienced the like just the atmosphere and stuff like that and then when when you're actually there you get to um experience the opening zone for what it is again food hall for me <laughs> was a was a highlight yeah. um but yeah it was a, it was a great experience yeah fair. i was interviewing a few of the women's team and they enjoyed the food hall uh, in 2018 as well like what was so good about it just the option uh well i um well, I'm a nutritionist, just generally, so I, I love I love my food, and they just had loads of different options. They have pretty much uh, options to cater for anyone. Having suffered from two food poisoning previously at um, a hockey tournament, were you a bit cautious, maybe, about trying other stuff? Or no, I, I wasn't. But funny you ask. Uh, so after the England game, I think I got a heat stroke uh, yeah. badly. Um, so uh, we went down to I think the England game, we went down to nine players at one point for a good five or six minutes. Um, and I looked at my stats after and I ran, I think I ran like a kilometre and a half um, more than like the previous games. And I was on for much longer periods. And I remember after I spoke to my parents who were there, who came to support, I was like, I'm really not feeling that great. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I'm just not feeling that great. I had some food because it was a later game. So I had some food later on. Mm -hmm. I felt a bit better, but then I woke up in the night with uh, not the greatest stomach in the world. So I had to let the doctors know. And because of the norovirus, they actually wanted, they, they quarantined me straight away. Really? So, yeah. Um, I knew I was a, it was heat stroke. I just basically wrote myself off in the game by running too much. And um, having like, had that experience of having to like isolate, you, you sort of like reminisce about it during like lockdown here. Well, my, I, I've, people have been talking about me, my isolation. I, I, have a, I, was, I was very lucky. Um, we had a really nice outdoor space in the flat. I've actually just moved to Fulham, but I was in Surbiton before. We had a really nice outdoor space. We had a lot of gym equipment. Um, obviously, I, I work at school, so the schools were furloughed me, so I didn't have the money issues that some people had and jobs insecurities that some people had, which is fantastic. Um, and I was able to do my gym sessions. I, I borrowed a, um, a turbo trainer off my half brother um, and I was able to do bike sessions and stuff like that. So I, I was very blessed that I locked down for me what wasn't as bad as, as it could have been for some people. Yeah, fair enough. And going back to the Commonwealth Games in 2018, it's sort of the uh, Results wise, was it sort of similar to 2014? Yeah, well, it was, but it was very, it was a very different feeling. Um, mainly because we were competing with these teams. We yeah. were like push, it wasn't just a sit back, defend, try and get them on the counter attack. It was you're going toe to toe with pretty much every team you're playing against. Yeah. Um, and which is again because of how we've developed and how the experience we've had playing those teams um, previously and throughout the whole year leading throughout the whole few years leading up to it we knew we could compete with them um but again if you don't play that level consistently over a long period of time you don't learn how to win those kind of tight games and we were at a stage at that point in our, in our development where we were getting this close but we didn't know how to basically manage games to right make sure we won the the games at, at the end um which we saw by results, but and then we put in a really good, well, pretty much every performance was a very good performance, bar probably Malaysia. Malaysia, we didn't really set our standards high enough, but apart from that, I think performance-wise, we actually played really well. Um, as just a couple of moments that cost us. And yeah. then against South Africa, we put in another good performance and, uh, and we saw it through. Yeah, awesome. And um, looking ahead to Birmingham 2020, does it still, at uh, Birmingham 2022 rather, and... Um, yeah. Does it still feel like sort of far away, or no? It's going to come back. It's going to come around really quick. I know that. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, next year is pretty much upon us already, and this year has been a bit of a write-off. To be <laughs> to be honest, I don't. I can't remember the last. Like, I don't think I've not played hockey for this long in my whole career. Yeah. So uh, I broke my foot actually last September, um, which is my first touch wood. My first injury since since I was 14 so um it was my first bad injury so I didn't play hockey basically all September till December 
Yeah. And then I got back into it in January and I, st I only started really getting back into how I was playing it around Feb and March. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, lockdown happened and we had a lot of test matches lined up this, this summer, which we were really looking forward to. Um, but unfortunately, that's, uh, it just came at the wrong time. Um, so now, obviously, with Danny coming in as head coach, we're really looking forward to, obviously, really pleased with Zach. Zach's done such an amazing job. And, um, but I'm really pleased for Danny to come into the head coaching role. Everyone knows him. He knows exactly what we need as a group. Um, we've actually already discussed what we're doing um, come at, like, with the uh, training and stuff coming up. We've got a Zoom call with him next week, uh, me, me, or me and the other captains, which will be really good. Um, and obviously, we'll be looking forward to the Euros next year. That will come so quickly. Obviously, lot um, Corona dependent because you know you don't know what's going on with uh, COVID dependent. You don't know what's going on really at the moment, but. Um, that will come really quickly and then it's one more year. Um, so it's, it's going to come around quick. It will be fantastic to have all the family there, um, being able to invite friends and stuff like that mm. to an event like the Commonwealth Games. And no doubt the UK um, always do um, events so well. So it's something that all of us um, who are going to be going for that going for the Commonwealth Games will be really looking forward to and putting every effort into to be selected for the Games. And Birmingham's obviously it's a bit more yeah. local for like family and friends for, for you to all go. Yeah, it will be really nice. Um, I, I've got, um, obviously I've got my family who, my, my parents, my dad used to play for Wales and GB. Yeah. Um, so he's been always, well, all my family have been my biggest supporters, but he's always he's contacted me with every bit of news possible under the sun if I just in case I've missed it <laughs> he's a he's an avid hockey supporter um and he's always at every game um no like he's he hasn't been uh, great uh, recently but he's put in every effort to be at every game possible which is which is the sport I love and hopefully he'll be able to come see me at uh, Birmingham as well with the rest yeah. of the family absolutely that'd be nice and um Having had like two sort of ninth place finishes at your last two uh, Commonwealth Games in your sort of third hat trick one, is that uh, ambition to go further than that? Yeah, I think a lot we put ourselves on the map now. So a lot of people are going to take us seriously as well. I think previously people are like, oh, they've got a couple of good results here and there. But uh, after the European A division, I think a lot of people took notice of us as a squad and how we've developed. And you can see that by a lot of the top teams asking to play us time and time again now which hasn't previously happened. So uh, I think people are going to be taking this quite seriously. And uh, they're go I, I just think we're going to be able to understand and ha know how to get the results that we need. Um, we're, we've developed as a squad so much throughout the last four years. I think that will really, um, really show when the, the Commonwealth Games comes and hopefully in the Euros as well, because obviously the, the Euros isn't far away. Um, and everyone's in the same boat with COVID, so like you, you just don't know. And it'll be great, it would be a, another great stepping stone for us as a squad to put our our, our marker down as a as a team. Yeah, well, it'd be great speaking to you, Lewis, and uh, good luck with your journey towards uh, Birmingham twenty twenty two. Cheers, Rob.